And welcome back, people, to the Web Shavers Roundtable. This is episode 34, and it's good to be here. My name is Douglas Smythe from Phoenix Arson at Coochmas.com, broadcasting live to you from the deserts of Arizona with my other fellow co host, David Gonzalez, who may be below me or to the side. I'm I am so below sure. today. I'm, I'm right oh. below you. Well, at least yeah. on my screen, I'm below you. Excellent. <laughs> know your place. And to my right <laughs> or left is Mr. Scott Austin Miller, the clean shaver. Hey, everybody. Um, YouTube fame and our very, very special, special, special guest today, Stan Hickam of Above the Tie. Stan, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Yay! A lot of excited people in the audience today and, and co hosts in the show. Uh, very stoked to have you on board with us. You're kind of a man of mystery. I, uh, I've been you know, doing my research, if you will, for the last week since I've known you've been coming on. I will be coming on, and yeah, it's really tough to really dig up anything about you, Stan. <laughs> well, I guess I'm just kind of under the, under the radar kind of guy. Yeah, hey. it's not a bad place to be. Bad, I wish I was under the radar. In fact, so this is going. I'm such you know I'm I'm such a fanboy of your razor, Stan. So it's just really great to have you on board. Um, and we all, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone here is very excited, and I'm glad this. I'm just shocked that this is working out. So with that said, Stan, let's just take it right from the top. Wet shaving. Before you even got into uh, above the tie and developing your own razors and whatnot, how did you get into wet shaving? How did this all begin for you? Um, well, because I am uh, fundamentally uh, cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, like everyone else, uh, I was using cartridge razors and and uh, had been using an electric razor, which is that was pretty beastly. And, but anyway, so I had ran out some carts and uh, so I had to replace them. And I was at Walmart and I was reaching up and I grabbed a bag and there was, it was like, whatever, 35, 40 bucks for this bag of cartridges. And I thought, this is just, this is crazy. This is insane. And so I thought uh, back when I was a, a teenager, first started shaving, uh, I actually used, uh, looking back on it, I realized they were super speeds. And of course, uh -huh. my dad wet shaved, you know, with, uh, with traditional shaving. So uh, since I knew that it did exist, but I thought, well, maybe there's still something out there. So I got on the internet, started doing some uh, searching, and came across, uh, you know, uh, you know, forums talking about wet shaving. And of course, I thought, I thought it was always wet shaving unless it was electric. But anyway, <laughs> all right. Into that and I thought, oh, I remember this stuff. And I didn't know you could still get the blade. And so I started reading about it, and I kind of got excited about it. And um, next thing I know, I'm uh, going to an antique store trying to find one, uh, which I did. Yeah. Uh, uh, and for the record, my first vintage razor was a Gillette uh, Ranger Tech, you know, 1942 oh, really Ranger cool. Tech. Wow. $5.40. Oh, yeah, that was a pretty good deal on that. And <laughs> $5.40? So $5.40. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. It, was, it was a big day. I remember that number. Yeah. And um, Not too shabby. Uh, yeah, I liked it for a long, a long time. Yeah. Tried it. It worked really well. And uh, so I, as far as uh, traditional shaving goes, you know, I was hooked then. And it just started learning more and more about it. Um, as time went on, I, I, well, I accumulated a few of them, actually, and decided which one I liked the most. And, and uh, I'm not really a collector. A lot of people are surprised about that, even though I've, I've, I've actually owned a lot of vintage razors uh, at one time or another. I just don't keep them. And um, uh, even I was very tempted with a, a um, What's the term? The uh, the no date or or pre date uh, Gillette double ring, you know, no patent date versions. Right. Yeah, I didn't think of that for a while, but then I finally, yeah, I finally saw that too. But anyway, <laughs> um, you're like, this is I, pointless. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice, but, yeah. Um. So anyway, uh, I wanted to get rid of them, so I ended up putting them on uh, eBay. And uh, you, as you may know, I, I work in healthcare. I'm a, I'm a radiographer. I'm a guy that uh, X-rays people and. Uh, it's a uh, permanent uh, type of stuff. When you, when you, if you remember drinking the white goopy stuff and, you know, the yeah, berry, yeah. And all that, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the evil guy that does that to you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I was still, still doing that. And of course, you know, when I put your stuff on eBay and you go make my image, I couldn't just throw any old photo in there. Right. Cause you know, my whole business is about making images. And so I, yeah. I you know, polish them up and make a nice description and sell to, you know, see if I can get rid of the crazy things. And all of a sudden uh, I end up, uh, you know, tripling my money on them. And so I thought, hey, that's an <laughs> interesting little discovery. And uh, so I won't bore you with all that, but suffice it to say, I sold a lot of stuff on eBay. I sold a lot of vintage razors on eBay. And then as time got, went on, I thought, you know, if you could uh, synthesize various little aspects of these vintage razors and maybe put those into uh, one, 
well, uh, combine them into one razor, you might have a pretty nice little tool. And uh, uh, so I thought, well, you know, why not? I'll just, I'll just make one. Yes. <laughs> why not? Yeah. Above the tie. That is awesome. So in the very beginning, though, you started off as just a shave shop uh, selling vintage razors and replated razors. Is that correct, Stan? Uh, from, in the very beginning, it was just vintage razors and then yeah. uh, some soaps from other companies and, uh, you know, a few uh, modern razors from, uh, you, know, you know, Edwin Jagger and McCurr. Uh, and uh, then I came across the idea of replating them. And uh, right. that, that was that worked out really well. Um, and uh, so uh, actually, it was my son-in-law uh, who kind of helped set this thing up, you know, before we went live. Uh, <laughs> he can, he, he saw, oh, you know, so he yeah. saw me you know, struggling with all this stuff and uh, juggling it. And he finally said, uh, you need a website. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> said, yeah. Yes, you do. And um, so uh, that's uh, that's kind of how it all started. And uh, and then about midway into the, uh, the the second year of operation, that's when uh, uh, I designed a stainless steel line of razors and um, found someone to make them. Uh, the machine shop that would would create what I wanted, uh, which was kind of an interesting process because. Uh, uh, you may find you guys find this surprising, but you know some people don't want to take your money. No, <laughs> you know you. No, you, it's you, true. So I, I, I call up some of these people and I say, you know, I've got this vision. Here's what I want to do. I want to make these things, and I would describe it to them, and they would just say, uh, eh, "We can't make that." And yeah, well, the most amazing thing is, is one guy said, uh, "No one wants those." <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's not your problem. I just want you to make them. I got to sell exactly. them. Exactly. Exactly. I've, I've had the same problem with a machine shop as well. They look at me like I'm crazy, and they look at the the razor like they don't know how to do it. You know, I was giving them the double open comb though, which would take a lot of hand tooling. Yeah. But still, they like they've never got back to me. Like they don't see it profitable for them. They think maybe I'm just going to order ten of them or something like that. They don't. They don't. They're not part of this world, so they don't get it. But yeah, no, it's true. It's difficult to find a proper machine shop. You know, it's pretty amazing. But I was uh, very fortunate, and uh, the a process I thought was interesting is I've got my legal pad. I've drawn this stuff out, you know, as I uh, as I've seen it in as I've imagined it, you know, and and so and I'm, I'm telling this uh, guy who's got his CAD drawings up there, and I said, "This is what I want it to look like." And so he kind of struggles, but he basically kind of gets the rough idea, and he's moving along there, and I'd say, "Okay, uh, all right." change this, this, this slope is too, too steep, you know, make it, you know, change that and change this here. And, and so I thought if someone, a third person was in the room looking at this, they're probably thinking, I mean, here's this guy who's, you know, really uh, computer savvy and he's doing his thing. And here's this other guy who doesn't know a, a you know, a pixel from a fork, you know, is trying to figure <laughs> out, uh, I'm just telling him, it is, you know, I could see it in my mind, you know, I knew what it wanted to be. Right. You know, but he did a wonderful job of capturing that and then creating, you know, uh, the razors. So, and the original one, by the way, is the H1. It was originally called a Titan. Uh, yes, I remember the Titan. And uh, and uh, literally changed the name, uh, so it's now Kronos. But the uh, that was the original uh, original run. That was actually the original prototype. Is the H1. And uh, interesting. So uh, now, what happened? Someone came after you legally, Stan? Is that Correct. Yes, I was contacted by a uh, by a gentleman that uh, said that he was al he was already producing razors by that name, and I thought, wow, I, I, I looked <laughs> very thoroughly. I thought, and I thought, I sure don't remember seeing that, and uh, and so he gave me his website, and I went and looked at it, and it was a um, it was a cartridge razor. It was made out of plastic, as a cartridge razor, and it would squirt. You could squeeze shaving cream out of a handle. You know, it's kind of unusual. Oh. Combination. That's horrible. That sounds I, absolutely that's, horrible. It's like this travel. Yeah, to or something. I don't know. It's kind of, but, and yeah. uh, so anyway, I talked to my lawyer about it, and they said, "Well, you know, you haven't yeah. you know, your name's been out there hasn't been out there that long. You don't have a lot of money invested in. It. Probably easier just to go ahead and change the name. Don't worry about it. So, yeah. Good, better, and different. That's what happened. Exactly. Well, and, so yeah. then you started with with Kronos after that, right? Right. We, we okay. started going to uh, that. That was one of the Titans, but. Exactly. So it leaves you open to more Titans now, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, now, maybe you can uh, explain. To, there's a lot of like new um, people stumbling in here that aren't part of the wet shaving world, Stan, uh, that are just tuning in. And 
They're just hearing about your razors. Maybe you can explain what makes your razor different, the mix and match concept of your razors, if you will. Sure. Um, but one, like I said, uh, when I was looking at vintage razors, you know, there's different aspects of each one that I wanted that I liked. And, uh, and but one of the biggest thing is that if you look, if you start using different razors, different time periods, the, the, the level of aggression, you know, how they shave is dramatically different. And uh, of course, you let try to resolve that by the adjustables, you know, starting the mid to late fifties. But, um, you know, that that's cost prohibitive to develop an adjust, adjustable razor like that in, in the manner that I wanted. So I started right. thinking, well, how can I make a customizable razor that would suit the various needs that a customer would have? Because uh, I feel like the product really isn't very beneficial if it doesn't meet, you know, the customer's need. That's what it all boils down to anyway. So I started thinking about it and, it, and, it, and I just remembered my, you know, watch my dad use a socket wrench set. You know, with one handle and different sockets, of course. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, why not just have an aspect of the blade that's interchangeable or the head rather that's interchangeable? And so that's where I came up with the idea. Well, the, you know, the, the handle and the cap would, would be the same, but uh, the, 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 the mechanism of creating the blade angle or the arc of the blade that's affecting the angle and the blade gap, that could be customizable to each plate. And so therefore someone could, uh, have different uh, levels of aggression based on what their needs are. So the thought was maybe someone uh, likes to go two or three days of water, maybe a week between shaves, and they want a, a more aggressive razor for that. Uh, but then again, you know, maybe went camping or something. But then again, maybe typically they uh, they shave every day or every every day, and maybe that's when a more of a mid range aggression would be more suited for them. Well, then yeah. you also have people with other with different types of beards. You have some guys that have a uber thick beard and some that don't have the necessity to have an aggressive razor to do it. Exactly. I was mentioning all the, all three sets are uh, all three pieces. So in, that's the concept of having the set. If someone would buy the set because they have those different needs, but you're exactly right. If someone has a, you know, steel wool for a beard, they want like an H1, but if they got, you know, something, you know, that's milder, you know, they want to go to, you know, to the other side of the M1. Mm-hmm. And when we rolled that out, you know, immediately people started saying, well, where's the open combs? You know? <laughs> so, so right. like, well, okay, I guess we'll make some of those. Um, but, you know, it's been pretty challenging uh, because, um, you know, we don't have any blueprints on how to make this stuff. You just kind of have to, you know, make it up in your mind and then uh, start working with some guys and say, well, we, you know, we need to accomplish this. We need this to, need to work in this way. Right. And uh, it's kind of funny because then once it's, finally made and you got the first prototype it's like well somebody's got to try it you know so <laughs> they gave up for the straw and see he's gonna be the, the winner yeah Here's right <laughs> I just want to say right now to the, the people in the gallery, uh, guys, if you could just hold all your questions for a little later, uh, just because uh, Scott and uh, David and I have have, all, have a lot of questions right now for Stan and, and it's our show, but uh, you know, someday, <laughs> no, I'm joking guys, but, uh, but we will be taking all your questions at the end. I do also want to make an announcement that this is, you know, Stan is part of, he's one of the vendors at the big shave West this year. And this is part of our big shave West edition of um, the wet shapers round table. And so Rob was our first guest last week. Now we get Stan, who's next week. I'm not really sure yet, but it will be someone that will be attending the Big Shave West. Uh, so that's what I have to say. Scott, do you have any questions? Yes, I, yes, I do. So I actually wrote these out on my computer to make sure I don't forget them. Um, so I, I, the first above the tie razor that I got to try was the S2. Okay. And I had actually, before I even saw it, so I borrowed my brothers to try it out. Um, before I had even seen it or heard of a open comb slant, I actually had wondered, has anybody ever tried to make an open comb slant? I wonder what that would look like. And then you came out with the S2. So, uh, or then I, I learned about the S2. So what was your inspiration to make that? Because it's, a, I know David doesn't, it, like he's had mixed results with it, but I absolutely loved it. So where was, what was your inspiration for that? Where did that idea come from? Well, I wanted to uh, offer the, sh- the same type of options for people who like uh, solid bars and for those who like open combs to begin with. That was the first thing. And then the second thing was I, I realized that, um, to my knowledge, no one offers a machined uh, open comb slant at all. 
And so that became kind of a challenge to do something unique. And that's uh, one of the things we try to do here. You know, we kind of think the Razor's concept is unique in the first place because you can exchange the plates. Mm -hmm. Well, we might as well make a slant that's going to be unique too. So if no one else is making an open comb slant, then, then that sounds like something we need to work on. So that's what we did. Uh, Stan, uh, kind of carrying over from, from what, they, what he asked, you developed these Razor's. How do you test them? Are you the own personal tester or are you using a panel of people that you trust to test them? I'm just curious because that, that, that open comb slant is very out of the box because nobody is doing it. So I'm actually just curious. And especially like you said, every little, there's no blueprint on real razors like this. It's with all your different aggressive, the, the different aggressive levels of your plates. How did you test all these out? Well, I guess I'd say, you know, all the above. Sometimes they were, you know, I, I would use them on myself, obviously. And, and uh, we've got a, a few people that we, we give uh, prototypes to, to, to try. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, getting back to the original Razor, which was the Titan H1, uh, I actually asked for some volunteers on Badger and Blade. And, you know, some people stepped forward, so, oh, yeah, we'll try it. And uh, <laughs> so I uh, sent some out and got the feedback. And to my knowledge, no one passed away. Uh, that was the one that never got back. So I don't know if it, it had, a, you know, I'm afraid to ask any questions. You know, maybe it was, <laughs> it was a bad habit. I don't know. But, uh, but the slant, um, I had been interested in slants because a lot of people really like those. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people look at those as being very aggressive. And a lot of people tend to be intimidated by using mm -hmm. slants. And um, oh, no, you, I didn't find your, your slant to be at all aggressive. No. Well, yeah. Well, thank you. That actually was the goal because, uh, you know, I like to be able to pick up uh, one of our razors and, and enjoy it. So if it was, uh, you know, too frightening, I wouldn't have any fun. So our, our slants are, some people are a little surprised. They feel like our slants are a little bit on the milder side, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, it depends on the individual, but it's okay with me because uh, I think that it seems to me that more people have been willing to try them because they feel like it's not as intimidating as, as some of the others. But then again, as you guys know, uh, one razor works well for one guy that may not work that well for the other. So yeah. and as much as you try to make it, um, give an idea of what the level, what that experience is going to be like, no one can really know for sure until they try it. Right. And that's one of the reasons we come up with our guarantee and our 30 day uh, grace period. So if, so if you buy an H1 and it's taking your hide off, well, uh, like I said, our primary goal was to satisfy customers. Well, that's not going to be very satisfactory. So, that's the reason uh, you know, I set this up. Well, you know, get back in touch with us. And if you, you know, for those who are buying directly from us, we'd be glad to exchange those plates out. And um, excellent. I mean, we kind of uh, have a little motto. I mean, just like try to treat people the way we'd want to be treated. Yeah. You know, if I bought something somewhere and it didn't work, this wasn't going to work for me. I'd like to know that the person who sold it to me would try to help me get through it in some way, you know, with exchanging or whatever. Absolutely. Exactly. Now, with yeah. all this testing and whatnot, Stan, um, do you ever? I mean, there are, are there any prototypes out there that never really saw the light of day? Or uh, actually, yes. Um, uh, <laughs> and actually, I brought one. Um, Yay! Good and you guys will be seeing something that no one's ever seen before. Well, people in the in the inner circle have seen this, but no one. Uh, <laughs> they've been actually in closer, like, ooh. <laughs> it's, how do I? It's how do I in the inner circle? Uh, Speak of, uh, I, like use, I like to think about using different materials, and uh, so uh, here's uh, here's one that we uh, ha have worked out with. It's uh, uh, it's actually an aluminum razor. Um, yeah. I'm trying to remember the, the version of what material this is. Uh, uh, Sixty four. Hold that right up to the camera, Stan. And uh, it's uh, you can tell about the handle oh, wow. has a different look to it. The handle's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I'm about to Don't piss your pants there, Scott. <laughs> um, and well, the thought process really is to try to, you know, because you know we, it's it's a premium product, and we and we realize that. But we'd also like to say, well, could we come up with something that is a little bit unique, a bit different? But the same same token, maybe we could bring this at a, a lower price point. You know, mm -hmm. right. that would help others. And uh, so that's what this is. And um, so so far, the 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 issue has been. Uh, as you guys know, uh, aluminum by itself will eventually start to corrode and pit against itself. It won't hold up. So you have right. to put it in something. It's called anodizing. And uh, so 
hopefully eventually we'll come up with some resolution here, but um, currently we would have to machine them and then ship them again to be anodized you know, and then return to us. And um, so right now it's kind of a, it's kind of a cost thing and it's uh, you know, finding people to do the right work. I will tell you something I thought was kind of neat though. One of my original uh, visions for this was, was take a, let's take a aluminum material and anodize it to begin with. So it'd have color and then do the machining afterwards. So you'd have, and then of course you'd anodize it a second time with a clear coat. So you'd have right. like a color or something, but then you'd have the metal appearance as well. So that right. was kind of the original thought on how to, on doing this. But so it's, you know, it's, it's still kind of floating around there in, in the, in the, on the, but it, there's potential that what's, do you have the weight of that Stan? I imagine that to be really light. Uh, it, I do not have the weight right now, but it is extremely light. It's very light. Yeah. And one of the things that's good, because some people say they like the weight of the stainless, and, and, and that's a good thing. But one thing that's beneficial about this is someone who's migrating, say, from the cartridge world, they're kind of used to a lighter device anyway, and then also kind of used to putting some pressure on their skin. And so digging, and, and I've used this, it actually shaves quite well. But I'm it, sure. I'm it, sure. It, um, the, <laughs> <laughs> start right now. Uh, I should send you one, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think we all should have yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only one in the world. So who do I give it to? I don't know which. which I, raised guy my the I raised my head first. <laughs> <laughs> Nose goes. Uh, uh, but um, anyway, I think it's a good transitional razor, and actually, I think it just give a, a good shape. I, I, you can tell I'm talking about it a lot, but I, I, you can tell I like it, and so I'm right. still, still trying to figure out what to do with that. But there's your the inside of something that hasn't. It's in existence, but it's not being released, and it's still, it still needs some tweaking before it's ready. Do you have a name in mind for it, Stan? Yeah, actually, we were thinking about, uh, since it's aircraft-grade aluminum, I was actually thinking about, my idea was to use um, you know, some sort of airplane names or, or, or you know, jets or, you know, something along those lines. Instead of, uh, wouldn't be like mythology, it would be an uh, aeronautical name. Right, right. Apollo. Like the stealth. The stealth, yeah. yeah. Well, you did Apollo, Don't call it the stealth. Like, <laughs> yeah. Viper or yeah, something. The Apollo space program, and then you also have Apollo, the mythological. Well, right? true. Yeah. Blue Angel. Blue Angel. You can just call it <laughs> David. How about that? Scott, what you got? The clean uh, shirt. <laughs> Biblical on it. <laughs> Scott, no, I'm, you... I'm, glad you, I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Stan, because I was actually going to ask you if you thought about getting into aluminum products because I know a, f a few other companies or a few other um, manufacturers have done aluminum versions of their stainless steel and kind of had mixed results. So I'm glad that, uh, that you're taking a look into it as well, but being really careful about doing appropriate testing and getting the results you want before you release it. So. One of the things I was originally concerned about was would, would the thread hold up? But mm -hmm. uh, we've actually come to the conclusion it probably would. You know, because actually some of the, you know, some of the English uh, vintage uh, razors are from the World War II period. Some of those are aluminum and, and they've done quite well. So, yeah, that's true. With the blue tip, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Not one of my favorites, but I do remember it being aluminum. <laughs> and it has now, aged well. You guys did a, uh, around the holidays, didn't you do a special edition that was, was it, uh, was it brass? Yeah, it was bronze. Oh, bronze. That's right. Yeah. It just so happens, we've got one right here. Oh. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in case you should ask. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, to my knowledge the only wow. bronze razor in the world. And uh, we all that need is gorgeous, beautiful. And it's a six-piece it set, so you, you have the razor and the plates, and you also have the inkwell stand that comes with it. Oh. That, uh, also, nice. Uh, That's it awesome. has the name, name and date on the bottom. You know. Cool. For, those who want to see that and uh it's a, uh, it's been a very good seller like i said we only made 100 of them um once we got started with it it's uh it turned out to be pretty difficult to work with <laughs> uh it's, it's been a lot of work but it's yeah. uh, this one's actually already starting to turn a little bit you probably can't tell on your camera but you know it doesn't have that um yellowy brass sort of look it's already starting to get a little bit of a patina on it Mm -hmm. um, and to be that's honest, that's kind of a cool thing about about brass or bronze is that it does develop that patina if you want it to. You could also well, keep it cleaned up. And you're exactly right. And that was my thinking because you know 
you know, you go to an art gallery and you see, you know, uh, bronze material that's got that classic brown look to me. I think it's pretty amazing. Exactly. Yeah. So, so my thinking is you're exactly right. You, you can polish it if you want to, and it always looks the way it is. It never rusts, by the way, you know, because a lot of people like that idea. There's no iron in it. Yeah. Exactly. No ferrous material. But on the other side, if you let it turn, then I think it looks really neat as well. Yeah. Antique. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Um, David? David, did you have a question for Stan? Okay. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. He's just standing in awe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he has this look sometimes on his face, and I don't know if he has a question or if it's like gas or something. Go ahead, Scott. What you got? <laughs> it's got me interested there, Douglas. Um, I, I did have one about the, uh, the the top cap. So everybody has a little bit different design with their with the heads, obviously. But with like, for instance, I've got an old Gillette Tech here. That you know, with the top cap, you have the the right. blade guides in there that help yeah. to hold it in, in straight. I know with the above the ties, it's really just two little tiny nubs that are in the top cap. What what was the where did you come up with that idea? I mean, that that's pretty unique. Well, I'd like to think it's one of our more clever things that we've gone about. Um, when I was given thought to how to tie these three pieces together. Um, I'd had uh, older razors and actually new razors. When I put the blade in, I, uh, I uh, well, I won't, won't mention your name, but I had a, a, a new razor actually. And when I would put it together, I'd had to, have to look at the head to make sure that the blade was symmetrical on each side. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes it would be, sometimes it wouldn't be. And I'd have to make some adjustments to it. So when I was making these, I thought, well, I need to find a way that keeps that from being a problem. And yeah. uh, so uh, I started thinking about how to go about that. And then it dawned on me that the, that the blades and sails, you know, have standard dimensions. Mm -hmm. So when you hold up a, you know, a, a double edged blade, as you guys know, you know, it's got the, you know, the wool, the wool, uh, the wool times, if you will, it moves toward the midline of that blade. And um, so I worked with uh, our design guy at the, at the, in the machine shop to say, well, I want, I want those posts to be the same diameter as those prongs. When you put this blade over me, it would cling to it. And that way it won't shift one way or the other. And so that's the idea of those posts being narrow is so that they will, will fit the, the, in, the interior of the blade will fit on that. And, um, and also, uh, and some people have asked me about this, but I, I purposely let the, uh, the head of the razor be just slightly smaller than the width of the blade or the length of the blade rather. Uh, because I think there's significance when you, I think it's, at least for me, it's good to have some tactile feedback when I'm putting this thing together. So you can put the cap in your hand, put the blade over the wool post, they snug it up. And as you're putting the base plate on it and you're screwing the, cap, the handle on it, you, the tips of your finger actually will, touch, will feel the edge of the blade. And to me, that, that helps to make sure it stays in place as you're screwing it together. You know, it's 99% likely to stay in place anyway, but if you got a little bit of a tactile feedback that lets you know that it may have shifted some while you're assembling it with the handle, I think that's a, a, a plus. So um, I think maybe some people thought we made it too short, but you know, our thought my, you know, I'll, I'll take either the credit or the blame, but uh, I, I did that on purpose. I wanted, I wanted it done that way. No, I think that's a brilliant idea that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm such a geek about this kind of stuff, but like, <laughs> I love the designs and, and how they all fit together and, and looking at different razor producers and seeing how they're, how they've kind of taken notes from each other and mm -hmm. tweaked things just a little bit to match their own style and what they think would be best. And so it's, I'm fascinated by that kind of stuff. Another thing you might find interesting is we, we have a patent pending status on that head design. Oh. You know, so wow. I thought that was pretty neat. Very cool. Definitely. Definitely. Now, Stan, with the Big Shave West coming up, and I, I'm, I'm just so excited you're going to be there for one. Uh, so go Damon for pulling that off. But is this your is this your first meetup that you'll be attending, or have you attended others in the past? This will be the first one ever. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. And we got him, people. Yes, we got him. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, it's good. Now, what what should we expect to see from you there on your table, your table spread, like one of each, or you know, I mean, what's what, what are we to expect? Um. I'm kind of wrestling with that. Um, actually, I think I may just bring some some representative samples. You know, I don't think I'll have a big table full of stuff and doing a lot of selling. What I'd rather do, I believe, my thought process is this: let people see the device, you see the razors for themselves, they can pick it up, look at it, touch it, and um, 
what I really hope can happen. I can't promise it, but no guarantees, but uh, I'd like to be able to say that we'll be able to bring one of our, I should have say, can, is that too much of a teaser? I mean, Oh. No, 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 no. I don't want to cause any trouble or anything. Maybe I shouldn't. Should, maybe I shouldn't have said all that. Oh no, no, that, that's fine. That's completely fine. <laughs> okay, David's good about twenty. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're uh, we've spoke about this a little bit. Uh, uh, we're we're trying to work out a way of uh, developing a an SE razor, a single edge razor. Oh, okay, cool. And uh, we in the vein of the Cobra mongoose, you know style yeah and uh, so uh you know and those are you know wonderful razors and highly regarded so that's a that's a pretty big challenge to compete with. Cool. But, but we're we're working on it and um and uh, so we're hope to at least you know maybe possibly <laughs> have a prototype so, prototype for, excellent that is cool. great I, are there going to be any giveaways maybe a drawing or something i don't know it is going to be, is there going to be any drawings no, or giveaways? It needs to be a physical drawing. Of oh, okay. okay. Oh. <laughs> that was a test. Yeah. Giveaways, I got to figure out what to do with the giveaways because, you know, we got to get ship stuff out there and I got to decide what to do with them. I'm going to ship it back and I just go at the last moment. Oh, oh, surprise and throw some, at, you know, toss them out there. I don't know. I got to think about it. That's it. Okay. okay. Better be careful. Those are stainless steel pieces. You're going to hurt somebody <laughs> throwing them out there. Yeah, you got a point, David. You're right there. Yeah. Yeah. Throw, throw the aluminum. Throw the aluminum ones out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> excited about you being at the big shave west and for my personal reasons why i'm excited is i get a lot of questions from people watching the youtube channel it is if the stainless steel razors that cost a hundred plus dollars really worth the purchase and it's really hard to answer that to somebody or give people an opinion that, that have never held one in, in your hands and i was blessed i was lucky enough that people in the community allowed me to try all your all your all your different heads with different handles and until you have one of your razors in your hand, you really can't truly appreciate it. No amount of pictures, no amount of me saying how much I love them will really give people the idea of how, what kind of quality yep. it is. And when you actually hold it in your hand, you feel that that, that, that piece of metal right there is going to last you to the yep. end of time and really going to be one of those true heirlooms. Exactly. Yes. And be proud to hand down to their kids. So that's what I'm really excited about, just people to be able to see just the quality, because I'll tell you, you guys, this, the craftsmanship on your razors is absolutely next level. It's mm -hmm. it's flawless from from yeah. that I've been able to see. Lamborghini, it's yeah. the Lamborghini of razors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's you know, yeah, it's uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, you probably I'm, might be a you know a little bit older than you guys, maybe just just a little bit, you know. Whatever. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can remember when uh, you know most stuff. Uh, that we would purchase was was made here in, in the U.S. and it, you know the and the the made in America thing was real important. I mean that, that was the the kind of the standard that everybody else tried to to reach, you know. And um, you know I, know I know there's a lot of complicated it, it it's it's complicated, but you know a lot of that's has gone now. You know, a lot of stuff is no longer made here, and um, and to be you know blunt about it, I could probably figure out some way of making having this stuff made somewhere else, you know, a lot cheaper. But um, that's what it would be, cheaper. And I think there is intrinsic value in having a device that's actually made here in the U.S. Um, you know, with, you know, and by, you know, you know with, with people here who have done this for a lot of years. And one thing I want to point out, and um, some of the equipment that is utilized to make these, uh, these razors is actually quite old. Yeah. Uh, now some of it's very modern, you know, CNC machines, but, but some of the work, uh, the, the the arch on the top of the cap is actually done on really old equipment. Some of that stuff is World War II period. That's that machinery, and the guys that work it, you know, I think are a real craftsman. You know, and some so are actually um, really proud of that piece. Some people think maybe that's not important, but you know, to me it is, and um, that's why um, you know, a stainless steel razor always will always be made here. That's yeah. that's actually. Have you ever considered? Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> really quick. Go um, on, Scott. With uh, I actually read an article that was done about you guys in craftsmanship.com right, right. or something like that. Was, was the, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's it. You talked about how some of the equipment they're using was used back from what, like World War II. Mm -hmm. You know, all the machining equipment and how even some of that super old equipment can still machine down to thousands oh. or ten thousandths of an inch. And it's some of the most accurate equipment that's still available. You know, it's, it's amazing. 
you're exactly right. You know, and if, and that was a very nice article. I was uh, very um, pleased that Todd you know, uh, would fly out here and do that for us. Um, but you're, you know, one of my questions was when I was touring the shop, you know, why do you have that over there? Is that, you know, that, you know, is that scrap metal or what? And, uh, you know, they were they just, oh, oh, no. And they talked about how they would use it. And, and, and there are certain applications. In fact, in that um, uh, article you're talking about in Craftsmanship Magazine, mm-hmm. there's a photograph of a guy with a big round thing that he's working on. I actually had nothing to do with razors, but uh, it was, it's actually used for, um, I think, some anti satellite. I can't remember what those things are for. It's actually a military use. I can't say much. Right, right. <laughs> but anyway, now, most it's a, machine shops, that's what they're doing, you know, stuff for the government. Yeah, yeah. most of the stuff they make yeah. gets blown up. You know, it's going kind of, <laughs> to. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it just the the, uh, the type of machining that they needed to do is best to use on that type of a, that piece of equipment, which is pretty amazing. Very interesting. Yeah. Now, Stan, have you ever thought of like maybe making a short documentary on this or a film of just, you know, some of this equipment in use? Um, not really. <laughs> uh, think about it. I would love to see that. And the I think next a lot How of It's Made episode. Right too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I find that stuff absolutely... I want to speak to uh, Ryan Stephen Green about maybe a future project there, uh, Douglas. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he has time for that. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Scott, you, you have anything else or should we turn this over to the gallery? Um, really quick, actually, uh, speaking to David's point about, um, you know, questioning whether or not the, the price point of the razors is really worth it. So my dad actually was constantly questioning my brother and I. My brother and I are both hobbyist shavers and have both used and enjoyed the ATTs. And my dad was really, really just like, come on guys, you're spending that much money on a razor. Is it really worth it? And so I let him borrow the M1, <laughs> uh, you know, for one day, one shave with it. And when I was visiting their house just before Christmas and, uh, my dad came downstairs from the bathroom, just raving about it. He's like, <laughs> okay, I get it now. <laughs> I totally get it now. <laughs> and we ended up uh, finding one for him for, or my mom ended up finding one for him for Christmas for, because he had literally one shave with it and he was oh, sold, sold absolutely sold. That's it's, great. That's great. It's, 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 yeah. The, the quality in the, in the craftsmanship really, it, it's a completely different feel from, I mean, I love vintage razors. I mean, I have this mm-hmm. little, I've got a bunch of vintage razors. I love them. They're, they shave great, but the, the feel is just completely different and it's, it's really quite quite incredible so with classic yeah yep. well, something i find interesting is uh, uh we have a uh, a family home that we actually we, we warehouse some of our material in and uh it's um that that farm out that's actually in that craftsmanship magazine oh, yeah. but that the, the original core of that house is log and uh i won't bore you all the details but that actually dates to uh, 1783 and, uh, and when you look at the size of those logs on the inside, you can't tell from the photos, but you know, I mean, those, they're big mm-hmm. and uh, it'd be easy to say that that house was overbuilt. You know, <laughs> why would you build it? Why do you, you can't you just use a smaller tree? What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, but you know, 200 plus years later, it's still being utilized. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. And so, uh, you know, my vision is to 200 years from now, these razors are still going to be used and yep. what's wrong with that? Certainly, certainly they, and I'm sure they will be. So guys with that, we are going to open up some questions to the gallery. So if you have any questions for Stan that we haven't already covered or asked, please post them now. And uh, until then, David will take us into that with uh, his own question. David, what you got? Well, it's, yeah. Because you know he does. David? You still there? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What was that? You were starting off. For- oh, I, I, I had a real lag. Uh, with uh, audio right there, so I kind of got confused. I was like, what? "You're leading us into the question section, David. Do you have any last questions for Stan before we move into the gallery?" Uh, not related specifically to above the tie, but um, just before we get into all this tangent, a bunch of a bunch of crazy questions from the peanut gallery. What are some of your favorite products yeah. to use? Great question. Uh, well, you know, it's obviously not your own stuff. Um, I like Parasso uh, shaving products, the, the the tube. I like that a lot. Um, hmm. 
<laughs> I used to love my own stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, the um, yeah, actually that, that Gillette Ranger Tech I told you about, I, I like that a lot. Um, uh, uh, super adjustable, Gillette Super Adjustable. I thought it was the, uh, the adjustable is actually I like that one the best. I, you know, I've used the Fat Boys, the toggles, and the you know, the regular slims. But the, to me, I thought the uh, long handled Super Adjustable was good. Um, I've used some Edwin Jagger. Uh, products and uh, yeah, I thought th those are those are good. Um, so, but but currently, uh, yeah, <laughs> the shaving brushes when we made ourselves, we're, we're currently not selling them at the moment. But maybe we can bring those back. So, uh, and I've been using them lately. I've been using our own shaving cream. So, I'm, it's not like I'm, I'm sounding boring now because I'm not coming up with anything new to tell you. Um, there is actually a True Fit. I think it's True Fit and Heel. Is that right? Uh, had a, a shaving cream that uh, worked really well. So nice, nice. And, and you said that you made your own uh, shaving brushes as, as well. Is that, is that what I heard? Uh, yes. Uh, we had a, a local artisan that would make the handles uh, of a type of resin material, uh, Acolaster, I think was the name of it. And then we'd uh, buy the knots, the silver tip knots, and then uh, you know assemble those and put them together. And we'd sell on our website, and they, hmm. there you are, you're back. <laughs> I lost you for a moment. Uh, and uh, But we're trying to work out something we can do that again. Unfortunately, that gentleman uh, has a, a serious illness, and he's no longer able to make those for us. Hmm. Oh, that's okay. okay. It looks like we have a question from the gallery from Iberto Maya, and he's asking, are there any new handles coming down the line, Stan? Probably. Uh, you know, I told you we're looking at the uh, SE razor and um, and uh, we'll probably bring on a new handle with that. Uh, there's been a lot of people asking about, you know, you're, you're familiar with our Atlas handle, which has the barber pole knurling on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of people like to see that a little bit larger. So I'm thinking of, uh, of doing that and um, maybe a variation between that and if you're familiar with the, I think it's about 1912, 1915 Gillette Aristocrat, the original Aristocrat. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, got, kind of a, a bell, I think they call it a bell handle or a trumpet handle. And uh, so I'm kind of thinking about marrying those, kind of getting some those design elements together and kind of coming up with something like that. But mm -hmm. yes, to make a longer barber pole handle, that's what it boils down to. Do you get that request a lot for longer handles, Stan? Uh, well, for, with that pattern on it, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we, we make the Atlas, this is three inches, the Chronos, three and a half inches, and the Colossus, which is four inches. And uh, and we don't sell as many of the four-inch handles as, as the ever previous two. Um, and in fact, I thought about maybe just doing away with the Colossus. And, and, uh, but then all of a sudden, you know, you get a big surge and everybody buys them all. So it's... Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's <laughs> I need to hang on to them, but... Yeah. Uh, I've had some comments that, you know, maybe we need to come up with some new style handles. And so, yeah, I need to look at that. And what I got to decide though, is you know, if you look at our website, our razors are basically named by their handle. Mm -hmm. you know, trying to make that, keep that simple. So, you know, when you bring in a new handle, you know, the web, you know, the, the website gets bigger, there's more razors going to be on it by that name. And so I don't want to oversaturate the consumer when they start looking, they see, you know, 50 razors and they just don't know what to do about it. Yeah. You know, so if I bring on a new handle, I might think, well, do I get rid of another one, one of the old ones? Uh, haven't decided. Just have to think that through. Now, uh, there's another question out there, Stan. Um, have you ever considered creating an uh, above the tie straight razor? And do you, in fact, straight raise, use a straight razor yourself, if ever? I've never used one. Uh, okay. We've I've had some restored. We've sold some on our website. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and yes, we have thought about it. Uh, I haven't had time to really explore it very deeply, but it has crossed my mind. Uh, it, it, you know, it's the material is a whole different animal, you know, and still stain. You're talking about carbon steel, and there's yeah. you know, a lot that comes comes in with that. Uh, but uh, we don't have anything on the drawing board now to do that. You know, maybe one one day we will, but at this point in time, we have no immediate plans to do that. Excellent, excellent. Well. Keep keep those emails coming to Stan, people. Uh, maybe we can push him over the over the edge to get us straight. Um, let's see. Um, got more questions. Let's see. Oh, we have someone asking what would be the best way to polish that bronze set. Okay, uh, I would use silver polish. 
Silver polish. Mm -hmm. Excellent. It's a milder polish. And, so uh, like flits? Um, or that'd probably work or right silver polish I mean, that's pretty common silver polish i just like it because it's a, a gentle material yeah stay away from the brazo right <laughs> yeah yeah i don't and you know the, the steel brushes no don't, don't do that <laughs> no no okay what else hmm. oh yeah here's a good question Alberto, you are asking some great questions today um what are your top blades on the at&t uh the above the tie razors your own personal choice my own personal choice are the Astra, and, and that's oh, really that's why when you buy a, a razor from us, included in the in the in the kit uh, is a box of Astra blades. You know, got some right there. You know, so that's what will actually be in the box. So uh, you know, when you buy it, because the top of the box looks like that, you know, and, and you open it up, and in the, the it's all cut out for the razor, sitting nicely, neatly in that, and that's one of the things that come with it are a three pack of blades. Now, uh, that's one of those things that varies a lot by individual. Um, uh, I noticed when I was using vintage razors, if I had a mild vintage razor, I liked a sharper blade, like say a feather. But I didn't like a feather blade in a more aggressive razor. So, um, and, and that was just that's just me. That's my, how my skin works. Um, but for me, I thought the Astro worked the best, and uh, overall, and that's why we just started including them. Uh, but some people will use you know different kinds. Uh, I think the um, Persona Reds do well. Uh, in these razors um but i've heard everybody mention everything every brand out there i've heard people say i use brand x and it's great you know so uh we feel like if nothing else if someone buys a razor it should at least have some blades in it <laughs> so that's what we do to get you started uh, I mean, i'm sure some people use them some people probably cost them, but that's that's just one of those things we do we just, we're, we're not going to sell you a razor and not give you a blade right or, or a pack of blades right on sure. Definitely. Makes perfect sense. Uh, okay, what else we got here? Oh, this is a good one. What are your thoughts on the current crop of higher end Kickstarter backed razors? So, you know, talking things like, um, let's see, the Rockwell, the, Rockwell. Uh, what else has come out recently? Yeah, the Luda Razor, <clears throat> the Get Supply. <laughs> well, I have. Uh started this business with no debt. Uh, I, was, I started out um, small and we've paid cash for everything that we've ever done. And, uh, and I think that's kind of a, a personal choice on how you go about things like that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in my personal life, we have no debt. You know, homes paid for, cars are paid for. It's just kind of the way we view things because um, uh, sometimes, you know, indebtedness can be problematic at times. And I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I've seen some of those uh, programs. I've seen some of those razors. Um, some of them are very uh, interesting looking. I'm not exactly sure uh, how they work, but they, they certainly look, you know, clever. And um, yeah. and um, well, yeah, I hope you have good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what else can you say, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah it's interesting to me. I you know read a magazine like uh, like Money. Money magazine, for example, and they'll have stories in there about people starting up a business, and, and they're talking about you know all this money they trying to you know generate, you know they sell their house and you know and then sell the kids or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes maybe you just need to. My thought was just uh, you know, start slow and, and 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 build your way. And uh, if your product's good, if your service is good, if you treat people the way they deserve to be treated, I think that will take you a long way. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I never, I've never overextended our sales or myself in such a way that it, you know I, I couldn't, I couldn't eat tomorrow if my razor didn't sell. So agree with you more with with uh, your above the tie company, are you doing that full time, or are you, you mentioned that you were doing a uh, that you were a radiographer? So are you still doing that? Uh, yeah, currently. Or how does that work out? Yeah, it's kind of. I've had people. I've been asked when I sleep and it's just, uh, <laughs> uh, it's actually been fun. So it's not been that big of a problem, but uh, yeah, I currently still work full time. I'm not sure how much longer that will, will be the case, but I'm still working full time. And uh, you know, Matt's my son-in-law and he does all the computer stuff for us. He built the websites. Um, you know, he does a great job at sort of thing, but he also works full time. At a, he's a, he's a coder program coder for another defense company. And so um 
uh, you know, we're all pretty busy. Uh, we have someone that does the packing. Uh, and then we, um, you know, we, we farm out a lot of the work. You know, you, uh, I think that's a, at least for me, I didn't, I didn't want to go out and try to, you know, uh, buy a lot of equipment and then hire people to operate them and all this because your overhead would be so tremendous. Um, uh, I'm kind of one of these late bloomers. So I, you know, went uh, to the university for, you know, my healthcare degree. But then later on, I went to another uh, university for a business degree. And, and one of the things that came across to me, well, I remember having a class, this guy, he kept, you know, talking all the time that cash was king. I thought he'd always talk about cash was king. At first, I thought he had some sort of issue. But then later, <laughs> I'm kind of a slow guy. The kind of thing dawned on me while he was trying to get across to us that, you know, if you um, if you tie up your funds in too many objects, you don't you it's called an opportunity cost. You you lose the opportunity to use that money for other opportunities when they show up. It could be really beneficial. Oh, here's a great place to put my money, and that would be very, that would be that would work well for me. But, oh, I'm sorry, I've got fifteen thousand boxes of whatever sitting over here. So, so we try to learn, run a very uh, just in time type of process. Mm-hmm. Right. There's only been, you know, occasionally we'll get a little bit behind, and there's been a perfect account on one hand. We've had a back order status, but we usually get that worked out very quickly, and uh, you know, and that's one of the things I'm very proud of. You know, some, you know, unfortunately, some people sometimes have problems getting their market, their products to market in a timely fashion and keep them readily available. And so, one of the things I think we've kind of brought to the to the shaving world is, you know, we have a product, and you can go to the website and you can buy it. And if it's not at our website, we have wholesalers that you can go to and you can buy it from them. Right, so we try right. to make the product available. So it, can, it gets back to that, that core idea that, you know, we're trying to, you know, it, we're trying to serve somebody in this, re, in this regard, we're you know, serving people who are trying to shave. And uh, right. so that may sound, uh, I'm not sure how it sounds, but that's a story. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, when, um, we just, it kind of keeps back. Like I said, it's kind of a core principle. As long as we can provide something that people want and it's readily available, uh, I think we'll be, uh, I think we'll do well for that. Yeah. That's, right. that's a now, business you, model. So, yeah, it is. It's smart. It's very intelligent. Now, Stan, um, do you have any like stories, any funny stories of, uh, from the, the inside, the, the day to day with, uh, above the tie? Oh, <laughs> Anything entertaining? I can only imagine. I mean, I know some of the things that happen in my everyday life here at uh, Phoenix. I can only imagine what happens at Above the Tie. Or oddball requests that you've gotten from a customer yeah. or something like that. Oh, yeah, I've got a, some interesting requests before. And, um, and, um, and uh, usually I would... <laughs> I gotta be careful. I gotta think this through before I say something. <laughs> Sorry, I just put you on the spot. Somebody might figure out what I'm talking about, but... Uh, um, I remember uh, sometimes international shipping is interesting. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes. I remember a uh, customer telling me that uh, he had never had, had never received his, his, uh, his order. And uh, you know, so I asked him for a little bit more information about that. And, and he said, well, um, I received a box from you, but the box was empty. <laughs> and I thought, well, that seems a little, a little unusual. So if someone stole it, why would they, continue shipping the box forward at, you know so that was that's a thought that was a little interesting yeah well so we worked something out but um hmm. uh, i think it's one of the more interesting some of the funny stuff actually happens you know when, when you go to the post office and and uh, you, you've got a package you're going to ship to a particular location and they'll look at you and say are you kidding you're actually going to ship something there and i said well <laughs> i'm going to try to you know yeah. <laughs> you know you know, I yeah, I feel like guys said, "Man, that's the Wild West. I don't know if you ever get anything out there or not." And yeah. I don't, I'm not talking Western U.S. I'm talking about other places. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you get these purchases, which is, you know, we're <laughs> we're glad to get. You know, we're thankful for. But you know, you know, sometimes it's like a. I'm not sure I can pronounce that country. I'm not even sure where that's at. But we'll we're, we're going to ship it there. Right. right. And the address is like take a right at the dead dog, then a left at where the Virgin <laughs> Mary was seen by the milkmaid in 1980. Yeah. Yeah, you know, what's really different, <laughs> it's in a different language. You can't read any of it. You know, well, yeah. it works. You, know, you just throw it in there. You know, see what happens. Oh yeah, no, I get, I get, I get people that clearly are using Google Translate, yeah. and it's just hysterical. I mean, like, I don't, even, I, I think someone should do an entire play with Google Translate one of these days, like from Russian to Google Translate, because it's highly entertaining stuff. These, these emails I share with my friends. <laughs> okay, we got another question coming in. So what? 
Okay, this is a good one. Thank you, Gonzo, for this question. What razor, for someone watching, uh, hearing about you for the first time, Stan, what razor would you personally recommend to, for someone to start with from above the tie? Well, I usually try to ask them what they're using, or what they're currently using, and kind of describe what sort of beard they have and do they get irritations very easily. Uh, but probably our most common, our most, our biggest seller probably is the Atlas R1. Uh -huh. We probably saw that combination more than anything else. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that I, love that. I, I love the R series. The R series is absolutely amazing. Uh, again, I tried them all, and I love the R series. The R series well, they're right in the middle ass. of the road, you know, as far as mm -hmm. progression and it's. It's a, in my opinion, it's a perfect daily driver, dude. Like I don't have a heavy beard. But I, I felt comfortable using it absolutely every day. It's efficient. It's not overly mild to where it's a struggle to find the the, the blade angle. It's just it's a damn perfect design for me. I, I absolutely think too love that it. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, when I'm interacting with someone, I'll ask them you know, like the size of their you know hands, for example. So you got yeah. some guy with really big hands, or somebody with small hands. I can direct them toward a uh, a certain razor. But also. Um, you know, a little bit longer handle actually can make a head, a razor head, a little bit more mild. Uh, and and my, my thought process on that is that you're, you're, you're moving your head. Your hand is actually moving farther away from the head when you're using it, from the razor head. Right. And uh -huh. that's going to affect the balance. And so there's not as much, uh, you know, pressure on the head. That's when a good point. So. Also great for uh, lady shavers. Do you, do you find you have a, a lot of lady customers? Do have some lady customers, yes. Uh, in fact, I've, I've been playing with the idea of trying to come up with a way of, you know, kind of a, a line of women's razors. And, you know, the thought would be that you'd have a, you know, a longer handle. You know, right. You remember the, uh, the, the vintage uh, Lady Gillette. Lady Gillette. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It was actually a pretty mild head. It's like a super speed head. It had a longer handle so it could, could reach right. with your ankles and stuff. Totally. Uh, uh, and that was part of that aluminum thing, too. I was kind of throwing out. That was pretty far back. Ah, yeah, no, that would be key too. A lighter aluminum, longer handle for the ladies. That's right. very nice. I hope to see that at the Big Shave West stand. <laughs> well, no pressure. We don't need that one yet. Uh, I'm, uh, just be, be warned. Um, if you take the aluminum razor to the Big Shave West, I'll probably I will try to shave with it <laughs> okay, at the Big well, Shave West. Don't forget, I'll bring it. Yeah, yeah. that means he's not going to David. <laughs> Way to go, David. <laughs> well, folks, we are winding down to the end of our episode today. Uh, if there's any last questions you'd like me to get in there to stand, please post them now. What do we got? Am I missing anything, Scott? Um, uh, not that I've seen. Anything? No, it looks like Let's the see. people are okay. I do want to mention, though, um, aside from the Big Shave West coming up April 23rd, uh, which everyone out there should be going to or trying to get to. It's going to be the Woodstock of wet shaving, <laughs> April 23rd. Uh, so many vendors and artists are going to be there. Uh, simply go to uh, thebigshave.com. It'll take you right to the page. And um, this list growing every day of all the vendors and artists that are going to be there. It's going to be, it's just going to be huge. Check that out. I also want to make uh, an announcement about a, a new website, a new collaboration that I, I just had with a, my good friend, Matthew Broderick, who uh, put together the Seattle Shave Con for the last few years. We created this page called shavemeetups.com. That's shavemeetups.com. Check that out, folks. If It'll just keep you posted on all the wet shaving meetups that are coming up across the country. and uh, You can find which one's closest to you by just typing in your state. Um, so, And you can also contact us for us to add your meetups. It's also a resource teaching you how to create your own meetup if there isn't one close to you. So check that out today, folks. It's shavemeetups.com. Be sure to share that as well. But uh, we also we already have a page on Facebook. I've had a page on Facebook for a while now, and it's been doing really great, and um, it's become very popular. And that's why we found an, we needed to do this off of Facebook and create a, its own unique site. So please check that out today. Uh -huh. um, and I think that's it for announcements on my end. What a great show it's been. Thank you so much Fantastic. for joining us. Dan. <laughs> really, like, You're welcome. I've got nothing else. Everyone in the audience are giving you thumbs up. Yep. And you, I, you're getting the most, I don't know if you can see the stand, but uh, in the bottom right-hand corner of your picture, you're getting high-fived by all the, the viewers. You've got 1,000 <laughs> yeah. applause. Yeah, you've got 1,600. Seven, you're close to 1,700. Oh, 1,700, there we go. <laughs> yeah. And we're all in comparison, two or three comparison to us, you, you'll see you're, you're killing it, Stan. So uh, this <laughs> is probably... One of our most popular shows. And uh, so thank you all for joining us today. This is episode 34 of the Wet Shavers Roundtable. Again, thank you, Stan, for being with us. I will yes. see you 
at the uh, the Big Save West <laughs> very soon. And uh, until next week, okay, ciao. Thank you for inviting me. Bye.